How's it going tonight? Hopefully everybody has had a good weekend. And maybe we're going to get lucky and cap it off with uh, some heat coming out tonight, we hope, out of the things we've got to open up. Before we get started, though, there's a little information to go over. So let's, uh, let's take a little flip through all of that. So the first thing up there you see, my feedback is completely automated. And I do that so that you never have to wait on me. Basically, it works like this. As soon as you leave positive feedback for me on eBay, uh, the automated system is instantly going to post for you in return. So that's the good news. One of the few things uh, in life that eBay does that makes our lives easier, right? <laughs> and of course, the second thing you see there is just a message to say thanks. Because I appreciate everybody who stops by and chats with me, watches the break, bids, breaks, whatever brings you here. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I'm glad to have you. What we're looking at right now, these are the breaks that are already up and listed on eBay, stuff that we're going to be breaking over the next five days. So tomorrow night, it's an autographed basketball jersey, another half case of our Leaf autographed football jerseys, another case of our Onyx Preferred Players National Edition autograph baseballs, listed by player name on that one, right? So not, not by teams, but by player name. A third case of Immaculate Baseball, which is the last case of Immaculate Baseball that I have on hand. And a fifth case of Certified Football. That's what tomorrow night looks like. On Tuesday night, we'll open a Gold Rush Series 2 autograph full-size football helmet, a fourth case of Elements Football, and a half case of Allen & Genter Baseball. On Wednesday night, note, we are going to start earlier than normal on Wednesday night as well. We're going to start at 9.30, so even earlier than we started tonight. And we will open a half case of the Leaf uh, football jerseys. We'll open a full 20 box case of Topps Clearly Authentic Baseball that comes out that day on Wednesday. And then we're going to open a third of a case of Don Russ football, which doesn't sound like a lot to hear a third of a case. But those six boxes of cards are going to have just under 1,500 cards in total. So it's actually a pretty monstrous break in terms of uh, total volume. So that comes out Wednesday as well, Don Russ football, and of course we'll start uh, in on it Wednesday night along with our Clearly Authentic. Thursday will be a fifth case of Elements, a second case of Clearly Authentic, and another full case of Topps Chrome. On Friday night, we will open a Game Day Greats autographed football jersey. That one's a single jersey, not a half case on that one. A full case of Leaf Flash football, that's its release day is Friday. We'll start on it Friday night. And then a sixth case of certified football. So we're going to be pretty busy in the week ahead with uh, both football and baseball. I believe we're going to have some more noir basketball probably around the time we get to the weekend. Uh, but I don't know that for sure. I've got to wait for the guy to tell me what day it's going to ship and what's going on with it. What you're looking at right now, this is the order that we're breaking in tonight. It's going to be the autograph batting helmet up first, followed by the half case of gold standard football, and then we'll roll into the 12 box full case of Topps Chrome Baseball. So if you're here for Topps Chrome, you probably have, I'm going to say maybe 30 minutes, uh, 30 to 35 minutes, something like that, I would guess, and then we'll be starting on Chrome. I'm anticipating that the batting helmet will ship out uh, on or before Saturday. That is a free shipping break. Anytime you do a break with me that has free shipping, it's going to go out five, six, seven days after the auction ends most of the time. Occasionally I can get it out a little quicker and if I can, uh, you know, just be pleasantly surprised. And our paid shipping breaks tonight, that would be Gold Standard and Topps Chrome. I am projecting to get out the door on Thursday. If it is possible to get them out sooner, I will do so. And last but not least, uh, if you happen to be in the batting helmet break or the gold standard break and your team is not pulled, you don't get a base card, you don't pull the item, you don't get anything at all, you are still entitled to a consolation trading card for your team. It can be from any year in any series. Uh, basically, I just pull it out of a box that I have for each team. And typically, I'm going to hold that and I'm going to track it for a rolling 90-day period and I will send it, this is if you're in the helmet break, I will send it the next time you do pull something, a card or a memorabilia item. I'll gather up all of those consolation cards that you're due and ship them out with that package. If you don't want to wait and you want it to come to you immediately, 
just drop me a message on eBay. I'll slap it in a plain white envelope with a stamp, and it'll be on its way to you. In gold standard, if you happen to get skunked in there, I hope that you don't. But if you do, your consolation card or cards will ship with the rest of the break, since that's a paid shipping break. 2018 Hit Parade Series 5 Autographed Baseball Batting Helmet Break Number 8. Everything we're opening tonight ended tonight, Sunday, August the 5th. And, of course, you see we have the format there, as you're probably accustomed to by now, with the team names are on the left, and our winning bidders are across from it there on the right-hand side. And, you know, basically, um, one of these spreadsheets is going to go up before the start of every break. So if you're not in this particular break, you are going to get a chance to see your name up there when we get to your product. And I just took autofocus off and I did adjust the focus manually. I do know that makes the background go out of focus, but we're still going to be able to see everything. So no worries. So the new, the fancy new boxes that Hit Parade uses, as you can see, have security seals on them, which I like. And they're smaller boxes and more manageable and they look a lot nicer too. So all in all, I'm glad to see that Hit Parade has kind of redesigned what they're doing with their packaging. It makes for a, a nicer kind of experience, I think. So Greg, I see you in chat and Geo's in chat. Happy Sunday to you too, my friend. If I can get into this without cutting my hand off, that'd be awesome. I'm not used to opening them sideways. As you know, I prefer to kind of flip them up and open them the other way, but uh, which is what I'm ultimately going to do because I still can't get in this thing. If I set it up the right way, it takes me like two seconds. I set it over on its side and causes me all kinds of problems. There's uh, some kind of little advertising thing. We don't need it. Here's what we do need. And this is a little carry bag that your helmet comes in. And Jotto871 is looking for Pete Rose. And Dale says... <laughs> Dale says he could never win the, the Steelers, even with Auction Sniper. Oh, man, I'm sorry, Dale. That is no fun. Oh, baby, look at this. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, it's not who I thought it was, though, but all right. It's a Yankee, and for a second, I saw that right there, and I thought we were, it looked like an A, and I thought, oh, man, are we going to have Aaron Judge coming out for our helmet? We don't, though. We have Chris Ch Chambliss is our helmet tonight so there you can get a look at the signature for it and of course i just hit the camera there's our the dave and adams authentication is tucked up inside the helmet there is a dave and adams authentication sticker there on the back as well and of course you saw the little mlb logo man because these are all authentic official mlb batting helmets so the New York Yankees coming out tonight with Chris Chambliss. And there's the, well, there it is. You know, that's how I know who those signatures are, guys. It's not like I could read that guy's signature. There's always a little sticker on the inside of these uh, bags and things for Hit Parade so that you know who something is, because otherwise half the time I'd look at it and have absolutely no idea. So let me get this set aside, and then we're going to be ready to rock on down. And actually, I think the person who had the Yankees, they're going to be pretty uh, happy about that, because I believe they bid on it originally not knowing it was a break, and then they kind of decided uh, to keep the spot after we had talked uh, back and forth in chat. So that is a nice bit of... I guess beginner's luck, if you will, for someone, their first break, and they kind of backed into it by accident and then ended up hitting it. So you can't go too wrong with that, I guess. So once again, if you didn't see this a moment ago, uh, I am projecting a Thursday shipping date for Gold Standard, which is what we're getting ready to open right now. And if you happen to get skunked in this break, your consolation card or cards will ship out with the rest of the break since it's paid shipping break. And here's our spreadsheet, of course, with team names there on the left-hand side and your name in lights across from it on the right-hand side. Well, your name in lights if you're the winning bidder. I guess if you're not the winning bidder, you wouldn't be up there, right? So I should qualify that, huh? So gold standard, 
This is my last case of, of gold standard. And you know how I love it. So I've kind of like held on to this last case to just <laughs> stretch it out a little bit. I always want more than they let me buy, but I have such fun with it. Um, so here's what's happening right now. Being that this is a full case and this is the first time we've cracked into it, even though we're only opening half of the case tonight, I'm taking out all 12 boxes. I'm going to number each of these boxes on the end and then I will use random.org to determine which ones we open tonight versus which ones we hang on to and open in the next break. So bear with me here for a moment while I work my way through that. I'll bring you with me when we go over to random to, let's just make those one and two. Well, that was silly. I probably shouldn't have done it that way. Now it's going to be weird when I sort them out. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Done now. Not that big a deal either way. So we're going to go to random. I'm just going to type in one through 12. I will hit random one single time. And whichever six numbers come up first, we'll open those corresponding six boxes tonight. So that's how that's going to work. And I do that really just to keep it all really transparent. You can see how it works and, you know, you don't have to worry about, uh, hey, if there's some kind of loaded case or something. Like, I don't have any idea what's ever in a case either. But I know that some people are worried about uh, things like, if somebody knew what was in the case or knew which boxes or what, you know, that sort of thing. I don't know. It's all too whatever for me. I, I couldn't keep track of it even if I did know. I don't imagine. There is 1 through 12 and here we go. It is box 9, 6, 7, 12, 10, and 8. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. Huh, that's easy to remember. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. Okay, so 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, and 12. Hooray. Okay, let me get these other six put away. They are snugly back in their little homes there in their nice little case. <laughs> Dale says he's going to get gold standard the next time, no matter what. Nobody's going to beat him out. He's going to use auction sniper, and he's he's coming for you. So whoever's after <laughs> whoever's after his teams in the next gold standard break, you better look out. Dale has stated his intentions to come get you. Uh, of course, this is that little cardboard uh, cardboard not cardboard uh, styrofoam insert in there is just it's going to be in all the boxes. So I'm not going to show it to you every time, just the first time. Geo, you out of here? Hey, well, thank you for coming by tonight. I'm sorry we didn't pull your team, but I appreciate you coming by to check it out. And of course, I always appreciate you breaking with me. T. Cassidy, what's up? How's it going, T. Cassidy? What did you do this weekend? Anything interesting? So, of course, you can see here each of these boxes has one pack in it. And then, of course, each of our packs are just loaded up with hits. So that's the good news. And there's going to be a base card in these, a couple base cards in these uh, two. And they're, they're numbered. Everything in gold standard is numbered. So we're going to have uh, five hits in here that will be either autograph or memorabilia, or maybe some of each might be autograph memorabilia piece but it's kind of an either or it's not guaranteed to be a certain number of autographs or a certain number of memorabilia just five hits per pack and then two two base cards uh sometimes they're parallels a little lower numbered and sometimes they're just regular base but that's what each pack looks like jay allen the baseball helmet was the new york yankees tonight the Yankee Yankees. Okay, so we are ready to roll here with gold standard. So first up is Dante Jackson, numbered to 99 for the Panthers. That's followed by Derek Carr to 49 Raiders. Our first hit out is Braxton Berrios for the Patriots. 
And that one is numbered to 149. Oh, Jay Allen, I'm sorry. <laughs> you didn't win. Tag on it. I'm sorry. And T. Cassidy, you said you've been working, so you're ready to see some breaks. Well, yeah, I feel you on that. When you work all the time, it's not very much fun, is it? This is DJ Moore and the Panthers. That is numbered to 75, triple relic and autograph. Pittsburgh Steelers, James Harrison, gridiron gold to 49. Still have very mixed feelings about James Harrison. I was kind of over the whole leaving and going to the Patriots until he started smack-talking Mike Tomlin. And then I, now I'm kind of back to, man, why are you doing that, James Harrison? Just leave well enough alone. Chris Carter and the Vikings. And where's my number on that? Oh, it's down on the bottom. I didn't even see it. It's to 125. It was hiding down there. And then a little Derek Carr relic, and the Derek Carr relic is also to 125. And that is pack number one. In pack number two, Josh Gordon to 99, Browns. And Mike McGlinchey, one of one. I always like having one of ones. And this one is for the... 49ers with Mr. Mike McGlinchey. You know, I almost didn't even recognize that as a one of one. Like, it took me a second to to realize that it was. So, that's kind of cool. Always nice to hit those. Charlie Joyner to 25. And Charlie Joyner is a charger, of course. I left our wrapper laying there. I don't know why. I guess I better pick that up. <laughs> Jamal Adams for the Jets to 125, Relic and Signature. Coming up behind that, I see a Dolphin, and the Dolphins are everywhere this year. The Dolphins rookies must have signed 500 times more things than any other team's rookies. Because the Dolphins are coming out of every 2018 product and an at an extraordinary rate. <laughs> and here is Kalen Bellage for the Dolphins, numbered to 99. And you should just, I mean, watch. You'll see what I'm talking about. The Dolphins are like crazy loaded, it seems like, in every 2018 product that we open. We have a triple relic here. It is Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, and Josh Allen. That's a nice little relic, as a matter of fact. And here's how this is going to work. You have to own two of the three teams to own 51% or more. And you must own 51% or more to take it out right. If no one owns two of the three teams, we'll go to random.org to award that card at the end of the break. Here's Jamon Moore for the Packers. And Jamon is, where is his number? Is it not numbered? It is numbered. I just can't find it. To 199. They keep moving the numbers around on these cards. They're in a different spot every time. And I can't seem to... to Locate it half the time. Stang Lover's here. Hey, Stang Lover. You're looking for some Raiders, huh? There is Darius Leonard to 99 for the Colts. We have the Derek Carr. We have had a Derek Carr relic go by for you, I think. To 49, Dalvin Cook and the Vikings. Autograph Mark Andrews for the uh, Ravens to 149. Uh-oh, this looks nice. Is this who I think it is? Yeah, I think we've got a nice one coming. Yes, we do. There's Mr. Josh Allen to 49 for the Buffalo Bills. How about that, kids? Triple relic autograph and low number. It's an excellent hit for the Bull, uh, Bills. Why did I say Bulls? I have no idea. Joe Mixon to 49, Mother Load. Of course, the Mother Load relics are always pretty cool in here. That's a particularly nice patch up there. So you've got some jersey patches, some pieces of the football. All in all, pretty nice looking card for the Bengals with Joe Mixon. David Johnson relic to 125. And then we have number two, 125 for the Lions, a little relic coming out for you with Matt Stafford. <laughs> Stang Lover says he needs some ink for the Raiders. He, he is not interested in the relic. He wants the ink. I feel you, man. 
Jalen Ramsey to 99 for the Jags. And then Carlos Hyde to 25 for the Browns. For the Jags again, this is Tanner Lee to 149. Oh, this looks interesting. Let's see, who is this? It's for the Patriots and it's Andre Tippett and numbered to 50. So that's, uh, of course, a completely different card set than, you know, different thickness, different type of card, different everything than the rest of Gold Standard. This is one of our Hall of Fame uh, autographs here. And that's actually pretty cool, I think. So if you've got the Patriots, that's a nice hit for you. Traquan Smith to 99 for the Saints. Traquan doesn't come out a tremendous amount, so I think... I think if you hit him, you're usually doing pretty well if you have the Saints. Calvin Ridley to 199, Falcons. And Lamar Jackson Relic to 199 for the Ravens. I would like to have had a little ink on that too. His signature has been surprisingly elusive, hasn't it? I mean, he's, he's in these products, but he's not at least for me he's not coming out with the same regularity as like rosen and allen and darnold and some of the others so i think he's a little been a little harder to pull that's to 99 to ray for the colts then we have sam bradford to 49 all geared up in his arizona cardinals uniform there's your ink stang lover you have ray guy which is uh a nice little Hall of Fame throwback kind of signature, numbered to 99 for the Raiders. And then we have to 99, another Raider. So when it rains, it pours. That is Ryan Sweetser. And of course, Ryan is in his Cowboys uniform. You guys can all see that he's in his Cowboys uniform. You probably know already that he was traded. But of course, we always are going to send it to the team that is shown there on the card, which in both cases is the Raiders. And then Panini very handily tells us up there the date that he was traded as well. So it's always going to go to the team you see listed on the card, not the uniform the player is wearing. So that was back-to-back -back autographs for the Raiders for you staying lover. So your mojo is continuing to do pretty well for you. Naheem Hines, numbered to 99 for the Colts. White gold, that's a nice Aaron Rodgers relic to 49 for the Packers. Deshaun Hamilton to 199 for the Broncos. So Stanglover, you're going to have to get your mojo all geared up for this weekend because you know what? We've got Leaf Flash that's coming out on Friday. We're going to start opening it Friday night and then... I should have uh, Leaf in the game used. I believe I will list it to break on Saturday. It might be Sunday, but I think Saturday. I was actually going to break it Friday alongside Flash, and then I kind of realized it's really, because it's a multi-sport product and there's a lot going on with it, I, can't, I was trying to break out the categories and find the best way to list it, and I just sort of ran out of time. So, you know. This is numbered to 99. It is Josh Norman and the Redskins. But also, that leaf in the game used guaranteed Otani uh, autographed relic in every case. Guaranteed. This is to 49. It's Jack Doyle and the Colts. Gina's here. Gina! Tell us about the National. Tell us, tell us. How did it go? Well, look at you go there, Stang Lover. You have two Ray guys. Why stop at one if you can have two? There are only 99 of them, and you have two of them. Out of one break. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? And next up we have Geno Atkins for the Bengals. And it is numbered to 99. Christian Kirk to 75 for the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, you're right. I mean, some of these are. It's really weird that sometimes we're pulling the same player like twice in the same break. I mean, even if he's in the case twice, which certainly obviously is possible, 
the fact that we use random to then divvy up the boxes makes it even less likely that we would pull them both in the same break, but yet there we did. Here is Jimmy G to 49, a nice Jimmy Garoppolo relic for the 49ers. Michael Gallup to 199 for the Cowboys. <laughs> Gina says that the National was flipping huge and a little overwhelming. Yeah, it is a lot of square feet. It's it's a crazy kind of thing, usually. But did you have fun? I mean, did you get to get all the autographs you wanted and meet everybody you wanted to meet and all that stuff? So once again, we have this triple relic here. It's Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, and Josh Allen. For someone to take it out right, they need to own two of the three teams. If no one owns two of the three, you can't possibly have 51%, and then we're going to go to random with it. So if we go to random, I will enter it in the order you see it on the card. So it will go in as Browns, Jets, and Bills. I would hit random three different times. The first two times will not count. It would be the third and final random that will tell us where that card's going to go. But before we do that, let's go back over here to our spreadsheet, our handy spreadsheet, and see if anyone owns 51% or more. All right, so there's uh, DD has the Browns, then our Buffalo Bills CB sports cards, and our Jets Golf Pro 2612. So we have three different team owners involved here. So we're definitely, definitely heading to random. All right, give me a second to get this typed in. Okay, so once again, you're ignoring the first two. It is only the third one that's going to count. So ignore the first one, ignore the second one. Here is our third and final, and it comes up as the Buffalo Bills. There you'll see our three times, our date and time stamp, and all that kind of jazz. And this card is headed to the Bills. Josh Allen bidding position on that one. And of course, it's in a sleeve, right? I did not write on the card. Wrote on the sleeve. <laughs> okay, so to recap, our triple relic going to the Bills in the Josh Allen position on the card because random.org told us so. Then we had the nice little one of one uh, base card earlier for Mike McGlinchey and the San Francisco 49ers. The rest of our recap here, we're just going to kind of buzz right on through it. This is just for those of you who maybe tuned in late or you're watching the video re recap after the fact and you didn't watch the rest of it. You just scrolled right to the end, which we've all done for sure before. Another nice Josh Allen. So the Bills ended up with the uh, a pretty solid break overall. Can't uh, can't complain too much when you end up with a couple of Josh Allens out of there. Of course, we say that now. When we'll see, <laughs> we'll see whether or not you can complain about having Josh Allen in a couple weeks from now. I guess when we get started on some of our preseason games and get a better look at some of these guys and see what we've really gonna. What we've really got going on, what we've got our hands on, so. And then, of course, uh, the Derek Carr and the Chris Carter. So that is this half case of gold standard finished up. I do have, of course, the back half of the case left. It's probably going to break, um, I don't know, probably in about eight or nine days from now. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment. So not like tomorrow, Monday, but maybe a week from tomorrow. Somewhere in that kind of range is what I'm thinking. So it's, it's a work in progress, but something along those lines. And we'll finish up gold standard, of course, when we get to that. We are getting ready to embark upon a full case of Topps Chrome Baseball. So you may as well settle in because that's going to take us a while to get through. So it's a 12 box break, full case. Once again, I am anticipating it to get out the door, shipping out to you on or about Thursday the 9th. If I can get it out faster than that, of course I will. And if something kind of goes strangely and not as expected for the week, it is always possible it could slide a day later as well. 
So this is a 12 box case of 2018 Topps Chrome Baseball. It's a full case break. It is break number three. Team names are there on the left, of course. Winning bidders are across from it on the right hand side. And I noticed something kind of weird tonight. Like I didn't finish, I really kind of glanced at the selling prices. I didn't fully delve into them. But I did notice that there were a bunch of teams that sold for less in the full case break than they have been selling in a half case break, which I think is super, super weird. But yeah, so there were a bunch, actually quite a few teams that actually sold for less when you have twice the amount of content. So I thought that was strange. But you know what it means. It means a good deal for, for those of you who are in the break tonight. It means you got a, a pretty good bargain price on most of this. So now we just have to pull out the cards to uh, back it up, right? And make it a true bargain. Ooh, sorry. Shook the table there. Trying to get into my case. I got a little carried away there, didn't I? Gave you some motion sickness. Um, so Gina, you said you met, uh, oh, Dolly from A League of Their Own. I always think of the movie. Uh, Dolly, who was part of the Women's Baseball League. Oh, yeah, and then you said movie A League of Their Own. <laughs> so she was there. That is cool. And out of the silver packs, packs, you got a Barkley patch and an Aiton patch. And you had fun. Well, that's the most important part. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Dale says, stupidity. I'm assuming that you mean the fact that some of the teams sold for less in the full case break than they've been selling in the in the half case break. I thought that was really unusual. I don't think I've really kind of ever seen that happen before to the extent that it did tonight. Because it wasn't just one or two teams. It was quite a few teams that sold for less in the full case break than they have routinely been bringing in their half case breaks. So that is super strange. I mean, you would think that it would be double the price, not less than the price, because it's double the amount of boxes. But what are you going to do? Weird things happen sometimes. This is one of them. So there you go. Oh, yeah. So Stang Lover says, uh, Stang Lover says there's, uh, yeah, probably so many breaks going on overall. Oh, of course. I mean, that's always, that's always the case. Uh, any on any given day as you all know there's zillions of breaks uh happening on and off of ebay and some days they just hit that way but honestly that's when it's good for you as a bidder because that means well really you spent less money and you doubled your chances of pulling something so sometimes you need breaks like that as a bidder that's your kind of get out break if you will for lack of a better word And so you have got, Staying Lover, the White Sox and the A's in here. All right. Well, we're going to see if you can continue to get it, uh, to get it uh, working your way. What did you say? There are something breaking, there are something breaking luminous. Oh, yeah, I mean, I I broke Luminous, of course, when it came out. We had, I don't remember how many cases, four or five cases of it, maybe something like that. But I don't have uh, any of it still. So I just kind of, um, you know, I, I, you guys know me. I don't keep it for extended periods of time normally. I mean, I've held gold standard that last case a little longer than I normally do. But most of the stuff, once it comes out, I'm going to buzz through it within a couple of weeks. Depending on how much I have. Sometimes I stretch it out over three weeks or a month, but usually it's within a couple of weeks. Because there's so much other stuff coming out. You know, if there wasn't so much stuff coming out every single week, it would be, uh, of course, much easier to hold it and stretch it and move it around here and there, but... But as it is, you know, you got to pay for the new stuff. You have to sell the old stuff. Greg, you have the Reds and the Brewers. All right. 
Dale, you said uh, breaking for nothing. Do you mean the the, lum the luminance breaks are selling for like next to nothing? Is that what you mean? It's really kind of strange because sometimes you can get a product that's a really hot product and it'll break really well in the beginning and it'll keep on breaking really well whether you broke it a month later or a year later then there are other products and they can be really hot when they come out and then when the next product comes out they just they cool down and they never heat back up so it's kind of an interesting sort of thing and there's really no rhyme or reason as to why sometimes it'll stay hot and other times it won't. It's just there are so many product choices out there, of course. And to Stang Lover's point, always always somebody breaking, uh, breaking whatever you're looking for, probably about any night of the week. <laughs> Dale says, thanks, Greg. You beat me on the reds. <laughs> All right, so we are looking for a couple of autographs per box. We're going to find loads of parallels and other things as we go along. And here is a little Cody Allen refractor, uh, extractor, I believe that's called. Uh, you know I'm terrible with the pattern names. And there's just a base refractor for Nolan Arenado. So for the most part, guys, uh, on the refractors, if they're not numbered, we're just going to look at them and keep on going. If they're a short print or they're numbered or something like that, of course, we'll stop and take a better look. But otherwise, uh, I'm not necessarily going to call all those out and stop on them because this is going to be a long break and uh, we got a lot of those coming up. Here's our first color of the evening. It's to 299 Blue Jays and Marcus Stroman. And our first autograph of the evening is Tanner Scott for the Baltimore Orioles. But if you have a question, of course, about uh, any card that you see go by, just grab me and ask me about it, and, you know, we'll take another look. Miguel Cabrera in the black and white for the Tigers. Before that, you saw a Noah Syndergaard go by with one of the 35th anniversary cards. That entire 35th anniversary uh insert set that entire thing refracts every single one of those are going to be uh refracting stang lover you said depends on the resale of cards sometimes you end up basically giving them away well of course for sure but i mean i'm talking about not even just that if you take for instance prism basketball which there is always a market for future stars all of that insert set will also refract and somebody's off to an excellent start tonight with the Atlanta Braves, Ronald Acuna, and a little color to go along with, numbered to 250 with our purple parallel for Acuna and the Braves. So nice hit to uh, come out of box number one here. But so, yes, so if you take, for instance, Prism Basketball, which is always hot, I don't care when, from any year, any, any time, Prism Basketball, they never make enough of it, it's always hot. But if you don't break that pretty soon after you get it, the market for breaking it gets weaker and weaker and weaker as you go along. Now, you could take the full case and sell the full case if you wanted to and probably still make... A decent amount of money because everybody always wants the product but from a breaking standpoint it starts cooling down fairly quickly as a whole and it never really quite gets back up to that same level that it was that it hit right when it came out for breaking but now again you could go out and sell it and still make tons of money so that's what I'm talking about some of those are kind of weird uh, just weird circumstances freshman flash you know we saw one of these go by a minute ago we're gonna see a whole lot more of them go by and that entire series of inserts does refract just like the superstar sensations will all be refractors as well here's a dominic smith for the new york mets and that is our rookie debut medallion card uh, these are falling about one per case on average in the Hobby cases of chrome. 
Oh, Aruna, you must have uh, the Braves, right? So you're pretty happy to get your night off to a good start. Then you can kind of kick back and relax a little bit after you see the money come out right there out of the first box. Then you're like, whew, okay, now I can sit back and anything else I hit is just gravy. <laughs> Those are the kind of breaks that are the most fun. As opposed to when you're down to the last box and you haven't hit anything and you're sweating it out and hoping it comes out of that last box. Those are not as much fun, are they? <laughs> I've been on both sides of that coin, so I feel you. But tonight, you definitely got out of the gate well. But Stang Lover, since I know you, you know, you definitely resell some of your cards. Who's your... Who are your hot sellers out of 2018 football so far this year? I mean, are you kind of, is it, of course we know Saquon Barkley, but outside of that, is it just the usual suspects? Is it Darnold and Rosen and Allen and like that? Or are we starting to see some action on some of our other rookies? Oh, <laughs> Aruna said, that's, what, that's exactly what I just said. Yes, now you can relax and watch the rest of the break. But you'd like to have an, an Aussie too? Okay, we'll see if we can't find you an Aussie in here as well. But yeah, it's always good to see a Kuna come out, period. But uh, particularly when you've got a little color going along with. Makes life a little better. And sometimes, you know, it will signal a hot case when you start out hot. So we'll have to see what autographs we pull out of here. That'll probably give us a good indicator. So if we get another, like, slam dunk hit out of box number two, then we might think we're going to be in a pretty good case. We'll just have to see what Tops is holding for us. You got a Barkley out of Majestic to five, and it sold for six fifty. Well, that's pretty good. Um, that's pretty good. So, I mean, obviously, Majestic is one of the higher end products, but it's also a fairly new product. It was uh, last year, I think, was its first year. So sometimes those newer products, it seems like it takes a couple of years for them to really start establishing what their price is going to be on the resale market. So I think 650 is, is very, very solid for Barkley to five out of Majestic. So autograph relic, of course, but yeah, nice. Nice hit, my friend. That definitely does, as you say, pay for some breaks. <laughs> you got to have some of those. That's, that's, what makes, that's what makes the world go round, so to speak. we had some hot cases in um, optic baseball this year our first two cases each had an Otani autograph in them and our third case didn't but I was beginning to think every case was going to have an Otani out of that too let's see what do you have Dale you have a two of seven pink refractor out of leaf metal draft that you are selling for um, for Acuna. So if anybody wants that, I've got all kinds of weird stuff coming off of these boxes and <laughs> things. I don't know what all this is. I'm like, there's these little fuzzies and things on my table all of a sudden. Um, so anyway, you guys just heard me read that out. If you're interested in it, uh, hook up there with Dale in chat. Speaking of chat, if you are watching live and you don't know how to get into chat, you need to be logged into YouTube, I believe, to make that happen. And uh, you should be able to see it after that. Victor Arano for the Phillies. If you're in the app, I don't know for sure if you have to be logged in in the app or not. I'm thinking about, you know, like if you've gone there as www.youtube.com kind of thing. So maybe if you're in the app, it might not matter. I don't know. 
if you're logged in or not. But it definitely does if you're on the computer. And also if you're on the browser on your computer or a desktop or a laptop, you might, uh, or rather if you're on your browser on a mobile device like an iPad or a phone and you've typed it in through the browser to get here, you might also have to click on view desktop version to see chat. There's a little hit for the twins. Those are both of our autographs out of this box that we were waiting on. So everything else here, we're now searching for refractors and color. Now the 35th anniversary. Little crimp. A Clint Frazier Freshman Flash. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Frazier Freshman Flash. I try to say that a lot of times in a row. I don't know. Stang Lover, you said you haven't sold many of your 18s yet, but uh, Ridley and Sony Michelle have been above average for second tier players. I don't think that I would call, I don't, I don't know that I would call Calvin Ridley a second tier. I mean, I know, I guess, people are kind of lumping him into that, but I think Ridley's going to be quite good. Uh, I think Sony Michelle will be good, too, but I'm really looking for a lot out of Calvin Ridley. Uh, of course, I think Carrion Johnson is going to be quite good. Uh, and then we've had some guys really uh, looking good in camp, one of them being Cortland Sutton for the Broncos. Lots of good things coming out uh, Reports coming out about him of uh, training camp. There's an Otani base card. I think we have the potential, actually, to have a very nice, well-rounded rookie class. There's a nice Torres rookie um, X-Fractor. So I think we've got a lot of potential to get beyond just the quarterbacks this year. But we'll see. I mean, you never know till they get on the field, but... Adam Jones and the Orioles to 150. A little more color coming out. Oh, Dale, your card is off being graded right now? Okay. Well, I hope that it comes back uh, graded through the roof, man. Hope you come back with a perfect minty mint tin. Which, by the way, speaking of grading... I'm sure many of you heard about this by now. At the National, there's a there's a group called Vintage Breaks, okay? And they buy the older stuff, and sometimes they break it even by the pack because a lot of it's really expensive stuff. And they happen to be breaking a pack of 55, 1955 Bowman. They sold it uh, at $500 a spot. And you were just assigned, you know, card number, whatever. I don't remember how many cards are in the pack, but there's, you know, 12 or 15 or however many there are. And each of those spots sold for $500. And so, guess what they pulled out of there? Oh, you got it. A Mickey Mantle, like, nearly minty mint. Apparently, they did the on-card grading there at the show, you know, because they'll do quick grade at a lot of these shows and it graded out as a nine. So the guy has already gotten offers of $50,000 for it. And I would imagine that it will go for more than that. Not too many 1955 Bowman Mickey Mantles hanging around out there, period, much less graded to a nine. So, wow. Oh, you're right, Sting Lover. Of course, people don't go crazy bidding for the Falcons like they do some of the others. For sure, because, you know, quarterbacks are always going to kind of rule the day in general in a rookie class if it's a good year for quarterbacks, which it was this year. So they're kind of going to be driving the bus until everybody gets on the field and then we start sorting out who's going to look like what. And, of course, Barkley, because he's... He's a generational talent, so Barkley and the and the QBs driving the bus. Oh, Stang Lover, you knew about the mantle bowman. Yeah, exactly. I mean that's that's uh that's crazy. I mean, of course the guy took a shot at five hundred dollars for one card. 
you you know you could have just as easily gotten a card that wasn't uh, wasn't worth your five hundred dollars. But it came out. I believe it was card twelve in the pack, if I remember right. And yeah, I mean something else come out of there, hit that mantle, and then grade it grades out to a nine and get a fifty k offer on the spot. Oh, it was card 19 in the pack. I don't know why I thought it was card 12 in the pack. See, there you go. I've lost, I've lost seven spots. <laughs> it was 19, not 12. I don't know. I'm just so excited that it was Mickey Mantle, okay? I didn't do a good job keeping track, but six shooters got me, got me uh, sorted out there, too. Yeah, Stang Lover says next to the last card in the pack, which is exactly what Six Shooter said as well. Card number 19 of 20. Yeah, that would be quite a fun thing to hit, wouldn't it? <laughs> but it's gutsy, though, taking those uh, shots at $500 a pop, knowing you're only going to get one card. Of course, it is 1955 Bowman, so it's not like you're going to be... You know, getting a card number 700 of, you know, Anthony Banda or anything like that. But, but still. San Francisco Giants. It is Brandon Crawford, 250. With the, our first gold of the evening. I see a redemption peeking around the corner here. And you know I'm so mean. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I flipped it over. Ooh, yeah. Well, means we're going to get an extra autograph in here. So there is Richard Urena for the Blue Jays. Or at least it should mean we're going to get an extra autograph. We should have. Uh, usually when they give us a redemption in here, we also get an extra one in the, in the product itself. So we'll see how that sorts itself out. And yeah, that's it. I've got it face down because I am bad that way. I'm going to make you wait. I know, it's so awful. But we're going to look at them all at once at the end of the break. That's how, that's how it goes. Six Shooter is asking, how popular are the red cards to five? Uh, quite popular. It, <laughs> red is quite popular. You can't they don't come out really all that often. And, of course, Tops keeps the same color scheme across uh, all their products, all their Tops and Bowman products. So orange is always to 25, gold is always to 50, red to 5, etc. So, yeah, the reds in general don't come out of things terribly often. So they're pretty popular, depending on the player, uh, especially. Here's another nice hit. So if you have the Yankees, you can kind of sit back and relax a little bit now because here's a very nice Andahar coming out for you. So the Yankees and the Braves both had a little sigh of relief so far. The Angels are still kind of holding on, holding, holding their breath a little bit, waiting to see if they can manage to pull Shohei out of here. Polanco to $2.99 for the Pirates. Oh, you hit a Byron Buxton to five yesterday. Okay, excellent. Oh, and Dale, you're gonna you gotta hit uh, the shower and get ready to turn in. I understand, man. It is a work night. Well, sort of. I mean you gotta work you gotta work tomorrow, so it basically makes it a work night. So I do understand that. I probably should have started us a little earlier. I started 9.45. Maybe I should have probably started us at 9 tonight, but I don't know. It's hard for me to get started much earlier because I've got to get the, you know, we have to have time for the listings to end and invoices to go out and people to pay and answer the questions and all that stuff. And it just adds up, it takes up a lot of time to do all that fun stuff. Oh, you're working the night shift. Oh, so can that mess up your whole... That would mess up my whole rhythm a lot, I think. 
Unless I was on it for a while. Like if they put me on night shift and I could stay on it for a long time and just completely get my schedule flipped around, I'd probably be okay. But I know a lot of people, they move them around. You know, you might have night shift for a couple weeks and then first shift for a couple weeks and, you know, that kind of stuff gets you messed up. Midnight to six. I could, I'd probably be fine midnight until about three. I'd probably start getting tired around three, thirty, or four, something like that. I, I would probably be tired by then. <laughs> I'd be dragging those last couple hours of that shift. Well, if I could get these packs open. That's always the worst part of this product is just the number of packs you have to open. There's not much I don't like about Topps Chrome. That's really about it. Just I don't like having to open so many packs. Just put one giant pack in there with all the cards in it. <laughs> yeah, I know that wouldn't work. I know, you don't have to tell me that. I was kind of kidding. But I do like the way they pack the jumbos usually. That's a little more user-friendly in terms of breaking. But then, you know what? So you think they've designed them to break. Because really they kind of have designed the jumbos to be good products to break. But then guess what? They won't let you buy just the jumbos if you're only breaking. You have to buy everything, the hobby and the jumbo. If you don't buy the hobby, you can't have the jumbo. There's an Aussie freshman flash. So it's kind of weird, right? They design it for breakers, but then say, oh yeah, by the way, you have to buy all this product that isn't designed for you to get the one that is designed for you. So strange. But, you know. That's just how it goes. And you would think in a product like this where they don't have any trouble selling it and it always sells out, you wouldn't think they would make you buy some of one kind to get the other kind. Everybody should just be able to buy what they want, but it doesn't work like that. Oh, you've done 20 plus years of shift work. Bless your heart, man. That, that really, I'm sure, has been at times challenging if they move you around a lot. I mean, in terms of the hours that you work. Greg, I absolutely agree with you. The jumbo is easier. Yeah, if I had my way, I would just break just the jumbo and nothing else. But they don't let us do it like that, unfortunately. They say, hey, if you want this, you have to buy that. And of course we want it, so we buy it. And then we break it. But this one isn't as bad as some of them because there's not a lot of cards in each pack. So it doesn't take very long to look through the contents of the box. It just takes a while to get everything out of the pack. That's really the, the main time-consuming thing about this. But, you know, they're trying to keep it so that it makes sense if you own a card store, you know, so people still can come in and buy packs of things without having to buy full boxes and all that. So... You know, obviously they have to continue to make products like this. We just, that was a refractor. We just, we're spoiled. We just want them all where we can get in them really quickly. <laughs> J.P. Crawford, freshman flash for the Phillies. This one is numbered to 99. We pulled a nice one of these to five with his autograph on it out of one of our breaks. I don't remember which one it was, but out of one of them we did. That one, of course, was to 99. Still a nice low number. And there's an Otani Freshman Flash. And I kind of always like getting them on the inserts. You know, getting the autographs on the inserts. Because they don't come out as often as the standard base card autographs. Okay. 
That was a nice Torres rookie refractor there that went by. Let me show you that again. Might actually might not be a refractor, just a base rookie. Dale says it's night that's night shift and day shift <laughs> and then a honey do list. <laughs> yeah, those lists are what get you, aren't they? That was a Reese Hoskins rookie refractor. There's a superstar sensations of Rizzo. And the Astros have an autograph hit with J.D. Davis. Do I still say his signatures like that just looks like three J's or three G's to me. That does not look like a J and two D's. Obviously that's what it is, but it's not what it looks like. So. Oh, I just about went whizzing past that, but we better not because that is a nice card to 99 for the Angels. I just about went right past Albert. All right, Dale, you out for tonight. Well, I hope that your time at work passes by quickly and safely. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes left, and then this is eight. So we've opened, what, four. Four of the 12 are opened with eight to go. We're a third of the way through at this moment, which is not too, too bad time-wise. As I figured, the full case will probably take us to somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half probably to get through the full case of this is my guess anyway so I'm trying to figure out how I want to list leaf in the game used have any of you that are in chat right now have any of you looked at the product or looked at the checklist if you have, I'm going to bounce something by you and see what you think. Because there's a lot of different categories. It's a multi-sport product. I mean, they've got hockey players. Oh, that's upside down. They've got hockey players, golfers, soccer players, predominantly baseball, but all these others mixed in. A fair amount of football, a fair amount of basketball. And some stuff is relics, some stuff are autographed relics, some stuff are, you know, it's just a, a lot of different things in there. Of course, it is a lot of relics. I mean, that's called in the game used. But the checklist is tremendous. So I don't, I think there's too many players to do a player break. And the other thing that would be hard about a player break is so many of the relics are quad relics. And then we even have relics with you know, cards with eight relics on them. I think we would spend an hour just doing random on everything if we did it as a player break. To do it as a team break, I think, would be kind of weird. And it wouldn't account for the soccer people necessarily because there's only, like, Pele and maybe one or two others. Wouldn't account for the golfers, which is Jack Nicholas, And I don't know if there's any other golfers or not, maybe. So I don't think that really works. So I was considering listing it by category for all the relics and then maybe just as a player break for the autographs. So that's kind of the way I was leaning towards, but I don't know if that's going to be confusing or not. Because otherwise, the other way to do it would just be everything by category. So, you know, 3,000 hit clubs. Whatever comes out of that is that. Then the, a dual autographs category, a triple autographs category, you know, all baseball autographs being one bid, all football autographs being one bid, that sort of thing. So I don't know. I can't really quite decide, but I am leaning towards the relics and things by category. So like everything that is a, a 3,000 hit club relic would just be in that bidding category. And then maybe doing the autographs as player breaks. 
But do you all think that's confusing? If you were bidding on it, would it confuse you that the autographs were players and the rest of it was category break or not? Sorry, I was looking at that Bryce Harper refractor again. I was just making sure that it wasn't uh, a short print that went by there. Because I really do want to get that listed because it's a pretty awesome product. And I've seen some nice stuff coming out for the Otanis. Of course, there's different places you can pull Otani. And there's different numbers on his autographs and all that. Because obviously at, at one per case, you didn't guaranteed you don't want them to be all that high numbered. So there's lots of different options and configurations where you can pull him out of there. Michael Fulmer to $2.99. And I have seen some nice ones uh, on eBay that have come out. There's a laundry tag up there right now, as a matter of fact, for one of them. Stephen and Greg, you both said yes, as in yes, you find that confusing, or yes, you would rather do it that way. I'm not sure what your yes is. I'm thinking you're saying yes, it's confusing if it's done that way, but I'm not 100% sure if that's what you're saying. Parker Bridwell and the Angels. Maybe you're saying, yes, you want to do it that way, like by category and except for the autographs, which would be by player. And then that way we wouldn't have to worry about the fact that some of them are golfers and some of them are soccer players and all that. Trey Turner for the Nationals, black and white. Greg says he thinks it's confusing. Steven says the first thing I said. I don't know what the first thing is that I said, but I probably said confusing. So, all right. So you guys don't like it that way then. For the Cincinnati Reds, there's Mella. But we can't, I, there's no way though I can do every single player on there and especially not with all those multiplayer relics. That would just be an absolute nightmare. So I'm going to have to figure out some other way to do it then, I guess. But I don't quite know what it's going to be. Which is why it didn't get listed tonight. I think I'll definitely keep the relics by category. Because, I mean, the relics, they, they'll say on the card, it's very obvious. You know, even when you look at the checklist, it, it would say... You know, 3,000 Hits Club, nickname, you know, whatever the different categories are. That's how they're broken out on the checklist, and it would actually say that on the card. So, those will definitely do as categories. The signatures I'll have to figure out about. If you look at the checklist for it, it would probably make more sense with what I was talking about, but it's their checklists are always um, an Excel spreadsheet, basically. That's what Leaf does, is an Excel spreadsheet. So then you have to print it out and kind of pick it apart and try to figure out what's what. But anyway, the goal is probably to have in the game used show up to break the first case of it either Saturday or Sunday, probably. Which is a bit later than I preferred. But it showed up unexpectedly. I had forgotten about that it was releasing this past week. And then my rep remembered, but he told me on Tuesday. And he said it wasn't showing up until Friday. So I didn't really worry about it that much. And then it actually showed up on Wednesday. And, of course, you know, I list five days in advance. So we were way past the window where I could break it on release night at that point. And same thing, of course, with Leaf Greatest Hits Basketball. It was the exact same deal. He, he told me on Tuesday, hey, this is coming. You'll have it on Friday. But no, it showed up on Wednesday. 
Well, yeah, Greg, there are definitely quad relics, and then there are eight-piece relics. I mean, there's a lot of different relics, and some of them are multi-sport relics, you know, like, like championship city kind of things, maybe relics from people in all different sports. In fact, there is one for Chicago that has uh, players from different sports on the same card. So that's why I said I think I'm going to have to do categories on all the relics. So anything that was, you know, Championship City, that's not technically the name of the category, but whatever the name is, anything that came out as any Championship City, for instance, would go to that category. Anything that came out as any 3000 Hit Club would go to that category, so on and so forth. The autographs are where you get into, into it being a little different because... You can have autographs on two or three different card sets. That is an Andrew Benintendi short print refractor for the Red Sox. With another freshman flash. But it is a cool product and there are some really fun stuff, uh, or some really fun things in it. There's Greg Allen to 150, some color for the Indians. Cleveland getting in the mix. Whoops, I've stacked Reyes in the wrong spot. Not that it really matters where I stack him exactly, because I've got to sort them all later anyway. Just for my own purposes, I kind of try to keep them stacked a certain way during the break just in case somebody's looking for something or another it's easier for me to go back and find it yeah greg so the ones that are that have city in the name of the relics uh, yeah again i don't remember exactly what the name of it was it's not exactly championship city but whatever has city in the name of it and then i mean there's rivals there's uh, probably 20 different uh, headings, 20 different categories for the relics that you could come across. That is numbered to 75. It is Tyler O'Neill and the Cardinals. But it's a pretty healthy checklist, that's for sure. A Zach Granite autograph for the Minnesota Twins. And here we have a Rangers autograph, Ronald Herrera. Yeah, the whole product, Greg, is a multi-sport product. I mean, that's, that's part of the challenge, of course, is that, as I was mentioning earlier, you've got soccer players in there with hockey players and football players and basketball players and uh, golfers. I mean, there's, there's lots of possibilities in there. The vast majority of it is baseball, if you were to just count them up. I, I shouldn't say the vast majority. I would say that baseball is the most heavily populated on the checklist by a decent margin. And then football, probably, and basketball behind that. And there's a little bit of hockey, a little bit of soccer, which Pele is the only one I remember offhand. And then Jack Nicholas, I don't remember if there's another golfer or not. But yeah, the whole entire product is a multi-sport product. But with an emphasis on baseball. Maybe that's the right way to say it. Multi-sport with an emphasis on baseball. And, of course, we've got clearly authentic baseball coming out on Wednesday. You know how I always like to open that. That started just last year, so it's a relatively new product. Every card in it is uh, hard-signed and encased in a one-touch on acetate. 20 boxes to a case. 
and pretty much always a lot of fun to open. I like all those that are like that. Archive Signature Series uh, and all Clearly Authentic, all of them that come out like that. I have a lot of fun with so whoops that is a refractor for JP Crawford so I'm looking forward to getting into it I don't remember exactly what I have coming of that but I want to say it's maybe like three four cases something like that so not an inordinate amount not as much as I ordered let's put it like that they never give me as much as I ordered Oh, Stang Lover, you were just asking me what I was... Yeah, see, I didn't even know. I didn't even look over to know that. I was just kind of sharing it anyway. Uh, Austin Meadows for the Pirates. That is to 499 autograph rookie refractor. He, of course, has since been traded, but obviously still goes to the Pirates. He's a pirate on that card. But yeah, Stang Lover, I would have to, I'll have to look to tell you exactly how many uh, are coming. There's a Shohei 35th anniversary, but I think it's around four, maybe, because um, I tried to get 10 or so, and of course they shot me down and give me 10. <laughs> oh yeah, I wouldn't, sp I wouldn't waste any time on that one for sure, because I'll break, I'm breaking the first case Wednesday night, of course, release night. I'm breaking the second case on Thursday night. Then Friday, of course, that's when uh, Leaf Flash comes out. So Leaf Flash will take place of Clearly Authentic on Friday night and Saturday night too, probably. Maybe even Sunday night for Leaf Flash. And then I'll probably work Clearly Authentic back in starting either Sunday or Monday, depending on how many nights in a row I want to break Flash. But yeah, we're kind of coming to the end of uh, a few things. The next case of Immaculate Baseball is the last I have of it. Of course, the gold standard that we broke tonight. I've got the back half of that case, and then that'll be it for gold standard. I think I've got maybe one, one case, maybe one and a half cases left of Allen and Genter. I've got a fair amount of tops chrome left. Three or four cases of that left. Yeah, Archive Signature Series, they messed me up on that this year. They put my numbers in incorrectly because I was supposed to get the same amount that I got last year because they didn't really get much of an increase. My distributor didn't. So they were just giving everybody the quantity they got that they gave them last year. And somebody keyed mine in as quantity one. And I was like, of course, by the time I saw the allocation numbers, the allocation had been done. And I said, hey, wait a minute. That's not what I had last year. Oh, I think it is. I'm like, oh, I know it is not. And so I got my invoice out, you know, took a picture of it, texted it over. I'm like, look, man, this is what I had last year. So you just told me everybody got what they got last year. So please fix mine. So then, of course, it turns into this whole thing. Oh, we can't fix it. Yeah, we, we allocated all of it. There's none to fix it with. Well, I knew that was a big lie. I knew that it was. But, of course, they're sticking to it, right? Pirates and Polanco with the black and white parallel. So, of course, as soon as the product gets released, they magically, the same day that it's released, have a whole bunch more at, like, I don't remember what, 300 more a case? I mean, like a gigantic increase. So I said, look, man, you know, there's it's not in dispute that you guys messed up my numbers. So can you just sell me the other cases I should have gotten at the pre-order price? And I'll even give you an extra $100 a case. Just let me have the rest of my cases. And they would not do it, which I thought was really nasty. <laughs> Troy Scribner and the Angels on our autograph there. So I was like, you know what? I mean, they admitted that they messed it up. They knew they messed it up. I still offered to pay them an extra $100 a case beyond what 
I should have gotten at the pre-order price and the guy still would not sell it to me. Wanted that extra 300 a case or whatever ridiculous price he asked. So honestly, I hope they choke on it. I hope they have it sitting there until cobwebs form on it. That made me so mad. <laughs> this is so, so yes, my archive signature series did not last long and that is why. This is numbered to 25. It's Craig Kimbrell and the Red Sox. A little orange color coming our way finally. But yeah, they don't, they don't even care. I mean, they've messed up a bunch of stuff for me this year. And they don't ever make it good or make it right. Because they know, oh well, if I don't buy it, somebody else will. Which kind of is not very cool. But yet, that's what happens. So you just kind of have to roll with it. And then he tried to act like he was making it up to me on the <laughs> on the archive signature retired players. Which, first of all, Tops always makes more of retired players than they do active player edition. And secondly, not there's not as much demand for the retired players edition as there is active players. Last year they called retired players postseason edition. This year they're calling it, I think, retired edition or something. But anyway, it's the same basic concept. So he says, oh, we're going to make up to you about your uh, active player edition. And I'm going to give you all of the retired players that you asked for. I said, really? Did you get a lot more than you were expecting? He goes, well, we got about one and a half times more than we were expecting. <laughs> I said, Okay, so you're not, in fact, doing me any favors or making up anything, because I would have gotten that anyway, because you have an abundance of it. <laughs> but I like the way they think they're, they're you know, sly. They, they think that you, you'll believe they're doing you some kind of favor. That's pretty amazing. You think about the amount of money I spend with some of these people. And they still just don't even care how they act towards you. Oh well, part of it. But I'll tell you this, if any one of you guys is ever spending, you know, $300,000 a year with me, I promise you that um, <laughs> I will give you whatever you want. <laughs> Well, within reason. Like, I'm not going to, you know, give you my house or anything. But you know what I mean. That is number 299 with an Aaron Judge. Future stars. A numbered future stars. There was another Otani base. And here's Runed, numbered to 50. Some gold coming out for the Rangers. Oh, that stupid sleeve, like, split right down the stupid middle. So we're actually, we're doing, we're doing pretty well on this time-wise. This is not too bad. Some color for the Yankees. And it is numbered to 150. Giovanni Gallegos. Gallegos, whichever it is. Probably neither one. Actually, <laughs> I say, I say, whichever you guys are going, yeah, no, neither one. I've, I don't believe I've ever heard his name pronounced. That's not one that I know how it should sound and just can't spit it out right. I've never heard his name pronounced, so I really don't have any idea how it should be. It's an Aaron Judge X Fractor that went by. Here's a nice little Harrison Bader for the Cardinals. Um, Greg, you're saying other sources for what? What is what is the question, my friend? You know my mind gets off in a in a ditch sometimes during breaks and stuff that I should know what you're asking. I don't always because I get focused on one thing or another. That is numbered to 99 for the Phillies. You might be talking about other other sources to buy from. You might be talking about that. 
I'm not sure if you are. If you're talking about that, um, I do actually buy from a number of sources. I think probably everybody does because there's no way that any one place could give you everything that you need if you're breaking up any kind of volume at all. No distributor is going to be able to keep you adequately supplied because everything's in such short supply and so many people are fighting for the same piece of the pie. So yes, it is. I, I was just talking about my my spend level with that one with that one particular place. But for sure, there are actually. I guess I have accounts with four or five of them in total. But there's really only three that I use on with any regularity. And from there, you just kind of have to piece it together and hope somebody likes you enough to give you something. <laughs> really, it's not based on how much they like you. They've got a whole, they've got spreadsheets that would go for 20 days where they factor what you're supposed to get, what you've earned based on what you spent and all kinds of other crazy stuff that doesn't make any sense. I guess it does to them, but it doesn't to anybody else, I don't think. Because, I mean, they'll come back and tell you, it's so funny, the person who does, who decides what everybody's going to get is not the same person who is your regular contact. It's not your sales rep or anything. So these people somewhere off in an office with a calculator in their spreadsheets are the ones who are figuring out what you supposedly are eligible to buy. And they'll come back and tell you weird stuff like... <laughs> You are eligible for 3.4 boxes. <laughs> 3.4 boxes. What are you going to do? Open up a box and send me some loose packs? I mean, it doesn't even make any sense with the stuff they tell you. And then, of course, it's up to the sales rep most of the time to then take those numbers and do what they're supposed to do with them. So a lot of times it does depend on your rep, too, how much they're willing to fight for you, how much they're willing to go to the mat and say, no, my customer should get this or whatever. I tell you what, though, I'd like to be on the sales rep side of it. I bet you those guys are making bank. I would say they probably don't get a very high percentage of commission, but they've got to have a tremendous sales volume flowing. The real racket is to be a distributor. I mean, good grief. Think about that. Think about how much money those distributors must be making. It's got to be an incredible sum of money. So that's where the that's where the real money is, unless your tops are panini, which of course none of us are that. Gohara blue to one hundred and fifty for the Atlanta Braves. So we have got what three boxes left after we finish looking through this one. So we've got this box and then six more hits. I can't remember if we've pulled a hit out of this box yet or not. But we know we definitely have six more hits in amongst those three boxes. Our next break of this, which is in a few nights, is also a full case. So we'll be doing 12 box again. And then we'll probably start mixing in some jumbo. Eh, 
probably about a week from now, seven, eight, nine days from now, somewhere in there, we'll start mixing in some chrome jumbo. I usually break the hobby first. Just because I always, it, I think it's always um, more tedious to break the hobby, sort of. So I usually break it first and get it out of the way. I'm going to do the jumbo second. Not always, but often that's how I do it. It's crazy to think about that it's almost back to school time, isn't it? Of course, some of you probably don't have kids, so it doesn't make any difference either way. But um, I just cannot believe it is almost time for school to start back. Which also means traffic for me, because I don't live that far from, from a school, a couple miles. So traffic is always, ugh, once they start back. Valera for the Cardinals. Of course, these days, don't we all live about a mile or two from a school? <laughs> it seems like there are so many schools out there. There's uh, that and pharmacies. Like everybody's a half a mile from a pharmacy, no matter where you live. Probably a mile from six pharmacies. <laughs> And then we're all within a mile or two of the school. At least that's what it feels like. Ooh, I see another redemption. Now we've got a pair of them up there waiting to see what we find. Hey, hey. Whoops, that was a Cisco Rookie Refractor. Ramirez Refractor. Nice little Ahmed Rosario freshman flash. So two redemptions waiting to be flipped. And three boxes. So eight total hits left to, waiting to be revealed. And I am going to stand up here for a second and get some, get my water. We can get back to it. I forgot to put the hat on tonight. I usually wear a hat when I break because my hair falls down into my face when I'm looking down at the cards. I forgot to grab it tonight. So obviously I don't normally walk around in a hat. And so yeah, my hair is falling down in my face and it's bugging me. I'm just sharing that. Is that too much information? Am I sharing too much right now? <laughs> Probably. Ah, oh, well, it's all amongst friends, right? So. So the Nationals back in Chicago next year. Means I'm not going to go there. And then Atlantic City, I believe, is what somebody told me. T. Cassidy, there have for sure been Cardinals, and I don't remember about the Rockies. But for sure, there have been Cardinals. Probably, I don't know, a handful of Cardinals. There's been more than one, I think. There's probably been two or three or so, maybe more. I don't know. But Rockies, I'm definitely not sure about. There's another Otani base. I'm just going to move it right now, stack it over there. Since I happen to see it there, I'll just grab it right off the top. Oh, 
All right, let's see what we have from here, and we'll open some more wrappers momentarily. Willie Calhoun. Yeah, this one's going to take a while to sort and to get shipped out the door and whatnot. Oh, Steven's been doing a better job uh, keeping track of it than me. He says we've had two uh, for the Cardinals. I actually would have thought more than two in the autograph. So see, shows you what I shows you what I know. But uh, T. Cassidy knows that I don't really retain most of that stuff. <laughs> Once we look at it, it goes right back out of my head the vast majority of the time. But T. Cassidy's been breaking with me a long time, so he knows that uh, on any given day, yeah, well, I might remember a third of it. <laughs> this is Jackie Bradley Jr. for the Red Sox, black and white parallel. Ooh, that's nice for my Cincinnati Reds. Look at that. Pretty to 50. I like it when my reds get hits because, well, we have so little to look forward to. <laughs> really, though, it's been, it's, it has been picking up for my reds uh, for the most part. And, of course, the fact that they said they're going to increase payroll next year. Well, when's the last time we heard that? About 150 years ago? Back when Marge Shot was still around. I mean, <laughs> when's the last time the Reds said they were going to increase the payroll? So there's hope. There is hope on the horizon. But then, of course, the ugly downside. Hunter Green out for the year with the strange UCL earlier this week. So it kind of always goes that way for the Reds. There'll be a good thing that will happen, and then a bad thing will offset it. And you end up back at even. Maybe it is the Marge Shot curse. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the curse I've been, you know, I've been trying to identify what, what has cursed the Reds and mostly their pitching staff. And I have never been able to figure out exactly what the precipitating event was, but it could just be a general Marge Shot curse. I don't know. Stranger things have happened. That's for sure. Well, the Washington Nationals get on the board with Reed. Yes, Stephen, we do have, of course, a nice farm system for a change. Uh, we do definitely have some good players coming up. Of course, Hunter was at the top of the list and so that's why I was saying the sprained UCL, you know, it's like you get a piece of good news. Oh, they're going to increase the payroll. And then you get a piece of bad news. Oh, you're, you know, recently, your newly drafted uh, pitcher who is probably our top prospect in the farm system sprains his UCL at, his UCL at age 19. Started to say his UCLA. <laughs> he sprained his college. Yeah, you know what I meant. Brett Gardner to 99 for the Yankees. But absolutely, the farm system is looking up. Of course, you know, Sinzel, another good prospect. Uh, he was injured earlier this year as well. So, we've got all kinds of, all kinds of weird things happen with the Reds. But it, it did get better from the first of the year. My goodness, at the first of the year, I would have said, oh, just forget it. <laughs> you know, you may as well just not even take the field. It was so bad. Then they kind of turned it around a little bit. And, and then we're still having some growing pains. Not the least of which has been Tyler Molly. My goodness, he's just killing us. His last two, three, four starts have just been horrendous. Yeah, you're waiting on Nick to hit the majors too, right? I mean, he would have been called up this year, I'm sure, if he didn't, if he had he not had the injury, so... 
And of course, well, I shouldn't say for sure because we're very crowded in the infield and then we keep drafting more players who naturally play in the same positions, i.e. Jonathan India. <laughs> but yeah, we seem to have a great affinity for second base, shortstop, and third base. Uh, we apparently like to have about a thousand of each. But yes, I would like to see Nick come up, and of course they've trained him on, they keep, trained him, but you know what I mean. They keep uh, moving him around in different positions. So they're trying to figure out where they can put him in the lineup, but then once he got injured, it kind of didn't matter anyway. Till next year. Well, I don't know. I mean, he's got the interim manager tag, right? Because obviously uh, our manager got canned a few weeks into the season and we just promoted from within and the guy's got the interim tag and I don't know if I think it's still the interim tag isn't it they haven't officially made him the new the new official forever manager but I wouldn't mind if they did I mean I think he's doing a good job as a whole The Braves have A.J. Mentor. For Atlanta. Whoops, I've got somebody trying to take off on me there. Victor Caratini. I'm going to tell you something. Here's a little, here's a little tip. Victor Caratini is coming out of Chrome like crazy. This one is numbered to five three of five and out of the first case I believe we had a one of the other breaks I think the first break we had a Victor Caratini that was maybe to 150 or it might have been lower but uh, and I think the other break maybe we had a regular Victor Caratini like he's been coming out with some regularity out of uh, Chrome for those of you who might be after him or Cubs fans in general, he's coming out a lot, and that hit to five is quite nice. So if you had the Cubbies tonight, congratulations on that. There was another Shohei 35th anniversary that went flying by there. But yeah, my little my little Reds are are turning it around. I'm glad I'd rather be the Reds than the Orioles right now. Let's say it like that cuz the Orioles got off to a bad start like my Reds did. But then unfortunately, they ended up trading virtually everyone, which then just kind of made them go further down the rabbit hole. They didn't trade virtually everyone, but they traded the people you wouldn't want to trade if you were not getting ready to tear down and start over. So I'm, I'm, but of course my Reds have been rebuilding for a thousand years. I'm just hoping we're close to coming out of that. And the Orioles are just kind of getting started on that path, I guess. So where Shohei hit two home runs, that was encouraging. He's getting back in the groove with hitting anyway. After his own UCL uh, injury. Chris Davis, black and white for the A's. You know, these guys start so young anymore, and they throw so hard when they're so young. It's not a wonder they're all suffering these injuries. I mean, you know, Hunter Green throwing 100-mile-an-hour fastballs at age 19. 
No wonder. It's the two ninety nine Max Kepler and the twins. That's kind of probably, that's like the sneaky sort of downside to the Tommy John surgery is because they all know they can have it. And some people think that you even come back stronger or better after Tommy John surgery. Now, not everybody says that, but some do believe that. And you hear of parents taking their kids in sometimes, you know, 14, 15 years old going to doctors wanting to know if their kid can have Tommy John. So it doesn't have the stigma that it used to have. So so nobody, so kids don't care. And coaches, parents, whatever, they're like, yeah, if you can throw it 100 miles an hour, throw it 100 miles an hour, you know? So that's kind of, I think, I think anyway, that's the kind of hidden downside to the Tommy John surgery being as successful as it has been is that kids throw harder, younger, and for more years as a result. And it just turns into an inevitability. You just almost know at some point you're going to end up getting that surgery. It's just like, when is it going to be? Of course, all the way around, it's a very different game than it used to be. From pitching onward. I mean, the, the pitch counts and the inning counts that we have now would have been a joke 20 years ago. You know, we've been like, what? You're only going to let me pitch what? <laughs> so, I don't know. This is a Nick Williams short print for the Phillies. Oh, I think, it, well, it doesn't matter. We'll recap all that. We'll recap both those stacks because I think I stacked that in, a, in the opposite stack of where I meant to stack it. For the Cubs to 99, Rizzo. Oh, and I forgot to say Last Box Mojo, didn't I? Dag, gone it. Stang Lover, you're always supposed to remind me about Last Box Mojo, and I forgot to say it tonight. That's all right. We're saying it now, so we'll see if we can... Still have it work a little magic for us. Lucas Sims, Atlanta Braves. So the Braves doing all right tonight. And the Yankees had the nice Andahar earlier. We still could have used something else for the Angels. I think we had a Parker Bridwell, maybe, but... Uh... <laughs> Stang Lover says, ah, he fell asleep. <laughs> That's why he didn't say last box mojo. He was sleeping. And then I woke him up. I'm sorry, man. I messed up your nap and everything. <laughs> he says last box white socks and A's mojo. See, he's being really specific. Not just last box mojo, but specific white socks and A's mojo. Have we had any Oakland A's tonight? We always pull A's, it seems like. Maybe they're on the redemptions up there because we almost always pull A's. Have we pulled any tonight? Can't even remember. Of course, we'll recap it in a minute, so we'll know shortly. We're going to look through the re the last of these cards. We'll flip our two redemptions, go to the check checklist, and verify our teams for both those. And then we will recap. Another Brett Gardner. We had one of him. Whoops. Tra uh, Mike Trout, rather, is a refractor. Got Trey Turner on the brain. Miami Marlins, Brian Anderson. 
Ryan Anderson's been a good little rookie this year. So I think uh, if you have the Marlins, that's a good one to pull for you. Whoops, somebody stuck to the back there. Yeah, and one of these breaks, um, I think it was maybe out of the first break, when I was sorting, I found a hit that was stuck to the back of another card. That didn't even, we didn't even know was in there. So it was like an extra hit in the box, because if we'd been short a hit, we would have noticed that. So it was an extra hit in the box, and I found it when I was sorting. It was that Victor Caratini I told you guys about earlier. Blue, I think it was. So yeah, whoever had the Cubs in that break, they're going to get an extra little surprise because they didn't know it was coming because I didn't know it was coming because it was stuck to the back of another card. <laughs> so stranger things have happened, but it does occasionally uh, weird stuff happens. Okay, here we go. We have got two redemptions that we're going to flip over. See what they might be all about. Let's get our recap stacks up here sort of ready to go. And our first redemption is Chance Cisco for the Orioles. Our second is Walker Bueller for the Dodgers. I'm surprised that Walker is a redemption. He's been live and everything, I think, up to this point, hasn't he? Pretty sure he has. All right, so we've got Rookie Autograph and Rookie Autograph Refractor Parallel. Those are the two that we've got to uh, look up over here at the TOPS website. So, yeah, we know what teams they're going to, but here's the deal. I'm always still going to look it up because I want it on screen. That way everybody can see it at the same time. And there's no questions or confusion or anything like that. So, Rookie Autograph, Chance, Cisco, there he is. Right there, Baltimore Orioles. Then we need the Rookie Autograph Refractor Parallel is our Walker Bueller. And somewhere down here, where are you? Did I go past it? I guess I did. <laughs> I guess he was just in Rookie Autographs, and then we just have to know it's the Refractor. That would make sense. I Clearly, I've dozed off, haven't I? <laughs> so, anyway, there it is, Walker Bueller, Los Angeles Dodgers. So... Now we are all officially verified on our redemptions. And it is time to recap. So Rookie Autograph and the Refractor, Parallel, Walker Bueller and the Dodgers, a redemption for the Orioles, Chance, Cisco, Rookie Autograph. A short print, Nick Williams, Black and White, Chris Davis for the A's, Jackie Bradley Jr., Red Sox, Polanco black and white for the Pirates and Andrew Benintendi short print refractor for the Red Sox. Trey Turner black and white for the Nats and Miggy for the Tigers black and white. Our numbered cards, we have Rizzo, Kepler, Gardner, Gohara, Althor, Runed, Judge, Kimbrell, Tyler O'Neill, Greg Allen, Michael Fulmer, Albert, Polanco, Brandon Crawford, Adam Jones, and Strowman. So that's got our non-autograph numbered cards. Here's our little case hit relic. It's Dominic Smith for the Mets. Rookie debut medallion card coming out one per case in general. Our autographs. Marlins, Braves, the nice Victor Caratini for the Cubs to five. That's actually a really nice hit. The Braves, the Nationals, the Reds to 50. The Cardinals and the Cardinals. Yankees, the Angels, the Pirates, Rangers, Twins, Reds again. Angels again. Astros, J.P. Crawford to 99 for the Phillies on the freshman flash insert. The Yankees with the nice Andahar. Richard Urena for 
the Blue Jays, the Twins, the Phillies, the nice Ronald Acuna for the Braves to 250 in the purple parallel. And we started it off tonight with Tanner Scott and the Baltimore Orioles. So that is it for our break tonight. I will put the spreadsheet up one final time in case someone missed it earlier or maybe you're watching on the uh, recorded uploaded version and you want to kind of scroll you've kind of scrolled to the end and you might not have seen this so let's take a look one more time so anticipating the paid shipping breaks tonight of gold standard and chrome to ship out on thursday approximately everybody pulled cards in chrome no need to worry about consolation cards there if you were in gold standard and you happened to get skunked and didn't pull a single card your consolation card or cards will ship out with the rest of the break since it's a paid shipping break our autographed batting helmet tonight which was the yankees um anticipating that to ship out on saturday because our free shipping breaks go out every five six seven days in general if you happen to get skunked in that break with the autograph batting helmet normally i'm going to save your consolation card until you have another package going when you have pulled a card or or an item and at that point i would look back over all the past 90 days grab up any consolation cards you were due package them up and send them off that way if you don't want to wait on that and you were in the helmet break you just send me a message on ebay let me know and i will drop it in the mail just plain white envelope and a stamp and then we're taking a look right now at the stuff coming up over the course of the next five days this is already up and running on ebay and of course uh, we'll start off tomorrow night opening an autographed basketball jersey we haven't done one of those in a while another half case of our leaf autographed football jerseys which those continue to be a lot of fun the last case i have of onyx preferred players autographed baseballs this is the national edition checklist it's a different checklist than what we were opening earlier in the year and it's listed as a player break so you're not going to find team names you're going to find player names on that one we will also open the last case of immaculate baseball that i have and the fifth case of certified football so that's what tomorrow night looks like on tuesday it's an autographed full-size football helmet a fourth case of Elements football, and we'll break another half case of Allen and Genter baseball. On Wednesday, note that we are starting at 9.30 instead of our normal 10. We're going to start early. We'll open a half case of autographed uh, Leaf football jerseys. We'll open a full 20-box case of clearly authentic baseball. And we're going to open six boxes of Don Russ football, which is a third of a case Sounds like it's not that much, but really it is. There's going to be almost 1,500 cards in that break. Just under 1,500 cards is a third of a case. So it's going to be a, a monster. We're going to be breaking that for a while on Wednesday night. Uh, both of those come out on Wednesday, Clearly Authentic and Don Russ Football. On Thursday, we're, we will open a fifth case of Elements, a second case of Clearly Authentic, and a fourth case of Topps Chrome. It will be another full case just like tonight was. On Friday, we'll open a single TriStar Game Day Greats autographed football jersey. That is the last one of those, at least the last I have on hand. We'll open a full case of Leaf Flash football. It comes out on Friday. We're going to open it on Friday. And then a sixth case of certified football. So that's how the days ahead are looking at the moment. And, of course, new stuff goes up eh, just about every night. And I think that has got us uh, covered for this evening. So I'm going to sign off and start getting all this stuff in top loaders and uh, all that jazz. And thank you everyone for joining me. I do appreciate very much you stopping by tonight and uh, always appreciate having you chat and bid and break with me. So hopefully I will see you again later in the week. And until then, take care and uh, have a good week ahead. Bye now.